Welcome, traveler. You have entered the realm of adventure. Prepare yourself for tales from beyond the dice. Welcome back. We play role-playing games like Dungeons and Dragons 5th Edition and more. I'm Luke, your DM, and with me is... Ben. I play Cortain, the level 9 fighter. It's... Warrior. It's, <laughs> it's Peter, and I'm playing Spigston Denser. Uh, Trav, I play Little Moss, who punches things hardly ever. And I'm Levi, I play Blokag, <laughs> the level 9 king. What is a king without his people? Just a sad <laughs> man with a crown. <laughs> oh, I'd be All pretty right. happy if I had a crown, even if no, I had no people. Maybe you, ma- maybe you make your people into the crown, and then you always have them with you. Like, the that, that was, that was horrible. recount the previous episode. Crit fail! <laughs> you have to do it no matter <laughs> what they roll! So, Levi, what happened previously? Previously on Beyond the Dice, it was an epic battle between two teams, the newly crowned King of the Sewers and his colleagues, and the previous prophet who had crowned him and betrayed him. The previous prophet of the sewers believed that these up-and-coming warriors were coming to destroy his family and steal his little baby puppy dog. That's what Lokag's headcanon says. And there was a valiant fight between these guys. There was a cyborg, there was some cyber ghouls. They kept exploding when they died because they just like, that was so vengeful with their death They're like no we must reclaim the crown we must get it back pretty well that was a massive combat um our guys just absolutely cleaned up because we're just absolutely champions and we decide to gracefully um show mercy to uh, gregor because he had done such a good deed to Lokag. We're like, no, we can't kill him. We must keep him alive. We must aid him, interrogate him, see what else he knows. And that's what happened last episode. All right, is, this, and- is this just what goes on in your head? or <laughs> Yeah, a bit okay. of both. That's like pure canon for me. Yeah. Right. No, that's cool. That's interesting. Thank you. So we all pick up in the sewers in New Etika, in the old section of Lower Etika, deep underground there, in this sort of dark room that's lit by these large fluorescent lights that are shining down on this area, which has pipes and walkways and just maybe some water processing sort of uh, devices and machines around the place. And in the center, this large sewer drain that water is spiraling down over the top of which there is a steel grate that's all rusted, old and covered in gunk. Our mercenaries, Little Moss, Cortain, Lokag and uh, Wolfie stand around Gregor with Spigs, slowly making his way towards them, not looking too great as he took quite a few hits from various cyborg zombies in the last battle. Gregor is sitting up now, Cortain holding onto him. Gregor is panting and sort of muttering stuff under his breath. Tell us where the mad doc is. Roll He's gone to the wall. Roll insight, Cortain. Oh, it was like it was a crit and then it just moved. <laughs> Two or one. Now it's seven. He's not telling you. I think he's telling the truth. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, let's just kill him. I don't know. I don't know if we need to kill this guy. I mean, he's just some crazy guy in the sewers. Cortain, like, we should kill him. And then Spigs, like, blinks at Cortain. Like, blinks or winks? He blinks. Okay. Get- you really, you really need a rest. Stop blinking at me. <laughs> Licking his lips. <laughs> All right, I'll just, I'll just have a rest over here. Big sits oh. like sits down against the whirlpool. I, I'm sorry to have to do that to you. I, I like, I actually liked you, you fellas, despite the fact that you were coming after him. <laughs> As he spits out some blood, dribbles down the side of his cheek into his light and black beard. 
Get some... Get some rest, old man. We're not gonna kill you. Cortain puts him down. <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> not that kind of put him <laughs> down. I just, I just, you know, I, um... I let him go. Now, he's just laying there, panting. He's reaching for something in, like, the pockets of his clothes. Does anybody stop him from going into his side pocket and grabbing something It's a out? bomb! Oh. Okay, I'm going to go and combat it. I'm going to do a dex roll to try and beat um, Little Moss to stop his arm. All right. So I've got an 18 to quickly stop his hand. I got a 23. Oh, too slow. What's his dex? He rolled pretty quick, actually. Uh, he got 22. Yes! So he's reaching into his pocket. He locate. He sees your arm dart towards him, so he puts his hand in his pocket really quick. But little Moss snatches his hand, his wrist out, and wrenches it out. You see this uh, this little leather pouch, like a little um, kind of like an old Game Boy case sort of thing, but made from sort of this old black leather. It falls out. It's got a zipper on the side of it. I flick it up to um, to Lokag and say, "Check this out." Will do. I unzip it. Inside. I get my eye really close. <laughs> there are three, uh, four things. Uh, an old key. It's on a, a little key tag. It says maintenance room. There is a folded up hollow picture. So this plastic rectangle. When you open it up, it has like this moving scene on there. And it is Gregor when he a little bit younger with a dwarven woman with uh, long blonde braids. They're holding a small dwarven girl. And uh, over them, a little bit taller than them, there is this elven... Well, not a little bit taller, but a fair bit taller. There is this elven doctor. He is receding, has dark hair tied back, pointy ears, and very drastic eyebrows that are sort of like pointing up in not like an angry way, maybe like a little bit of a mischievous way. He has a, uh, a goatee that points down, very pointed goatee. He's wearing this black shirt and over the top this sort of yellow blazer his arms are around them he's smiling and from what you have seen what ultra Die has given you that man in the background that elven man that is lazarus dr lazarus or his name is actually dr ecton lazala but he got the nickname lazarus for his research so i've been showing these things to the guys and and part way through it i kind of have a little flashback of like wasn't there some, like, ninja samurai guy? Hayashida, what's he been doing? Like, did we ditch him? Has he been smoking diaries? Did he just watch this? Um, he has not entered this room. He's... Okay. Well, then I'm going to be looking at Cortana and going, Hayashida, this is the guy. Um, what's what's our mission objective here? Hi this is the, the key to old mate's house. I'm guessing that, that that's right. Like, we knew that he was hiding away in a maintenance shack shack or you, I, do I think this is the f way forward? You know that Gregor said he lived in a little maintenance room um, yeah. Hayashida so we can rob his house. Doesn't respond when you talk through the communicator you can rob his house. Oh, his I'm not talking uh, I'm not talking to Hayashida oh. through the communicator okay, okay, okay. I'm verbally talking to Cortain to say Oh I thought you I thought No you Cortain said, okay, you should sorry. speak to Hayashida well, Also look at the other two things you find. One is this like this plastic, this blue plastic card with a little hole in the center of it. Uh, and then there are like maybe 30 creds in, in that pouch. So how many bombs, Luke? Zero bombs. I try, Cortain tries to get, tries to get Hayashida on the, uh, on the radio. He... Hayashida, do you hear us? He doesn't respond. I can't get through to him. But it could be because of how deep we are in the sewers. I don't, roll a, I don't know if there's... Roll perception, Cortain. Two. Two? Okay. Yes. You fall over. <laughs> <laughs> Regor reaches up towards the plastic hollow photo that you've got in your hand. Okay. Give it to him. See, if you go charging in there to stop what he's doing... You're gonna kill my wife and my daughter. 
You're gonna doom them. Are you sure they're not already dead? Like, you got ghouls fighting for you, man. This is... The others, like... This... Yeah, go. This... Any sort of gestures towards the uh, cyber ghoul. This is just one of the phases of his research. He's very close. Super close. Maybe another year or two and he'll be ready to help. Mate, I know he might like you and I might know you might like him, but I really don't think that messing with the dead and messing with the Tink Tink thing that he's playing with really, it's not going to work out well for not being dead. I don't care what Look, you say. They're the only things in this world that I've ever loved. And they were almost taken from me. And if he can help me, if he can bring them back, then I'll gladly die here. I'm not telling you anything. But that'll be okay, because then he can just bring you back. Possibly. Yes, you're right. So, so we should just we should just go in, hey? Don't, don't go in. <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're, we're gonna go in. Fuck. <laughs> like right, I guess. <laughs> but no. If you do go in, please, please don't, please don't kill him. Let him keep going. Let him keep doing what he's doing. Why do you even want him? Why are you even here? Why are you doing this? I feel like he's just stalling for time. Yeah. Introspection is not what you talk to this group about. Let's go, guys. I don't know what that means. <laughs> Wait, so Cortain, hang on. Are we going to tie him up? He's, uh, he's in a battle suit, right? He's wearing, like, battle plate over the top of his, like, shiny silver. Oh, so it's armor, not a battle suit. Yeah, yeah, not a battle suit. Just, um, yeah, just armor. Cortain, what are we going to do? We can't just leave him here. Do we steal his house key? Do we rifle through his panties? What do we do? I mean, seems a bit... Seems a bit unkind to take a man's house keys after you rob him of his hope of seeing his he loved ones again. Might have more ghouls in his house. Also, this is not an anime. We're not going through anyone's panties. <laughs> <laughs> can we? Can we? Can we take his house keys out and throw them in the giant toilet in the middle of the room? Oh, let's just, whoa! 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 <laughs> let's just let's just leave him. Leave him here. I mean, these these ghouls did. did did they really hurt anyone? <laughs> yes. <laughs> I'm right here. They... <laughs> well, have they didn't shards hurt of me, bone in, so... I have shards of bone in my elbow right now. <laughs> Cortain, uh, roll another... No, sorry, low cag this time. Roll a uh, perception. That'll be a 13. 13. You see that there's like a, a satchel at his side. You can take it if you wish. I open the satchel. There are a uh, a pack, a three pack of stims, medium stims. Boy, Spigs, I've got two stims for you. Oh. I'm taking one for myself. Also, inside there is a uh, another card. It uh, looks old bent, scratched up. So it looks like a, like a pay pass, uh, like a, not a pay pass, but like a pass card of some sort. Uh, where this, the blue one that you got looks new. This, this other one that you found is old. It's black. It's got like a silver strip on it. Uh, you find his sawn off shotgun in the bag as well. And a box full of cartridges. It just looks like an old sawn off shotgun. Nothing special. All right, Cortain, if you don't want to take him out or knock him out, um, I say oh, leave him I'm with the... To, I'm happy to knock him out. Well, you do Just... that. I'm happy to leave him with the photo. We're taking the keys. Um, Oi, Spigs, dope yourself up. And I inject one of the, the medium stems into my uh, neck. You feel this rush of cooling, soothing medicine move through your body. And uh, that's 2d6 plus 2 HPs. Cortain Nine will... Me pistol whip the guy alright uh, you can easily knock him out no problems he's unconscious Gregor is unconscious still breathing unconscious can we uh, maybe just have a quick uh, breather here I just jab these in you and we could you get going nah like it's not gonna be enough really if we're 
gonna check down this tyrant. He seemed pretty scared and pretty fearful that we really would just knock him over, so... He, and he also sound... Hang on. Just pretend that I rolled a crit on my insight check. He seemed fair innocent and honest when he was talking to us. Yeah, I don't think this Lazarus man will give us any problems. Alright, but I'm going to use this, both of these things and things like double injects into the same arm. Right. Uh, what if we kill him and he comes back? Because his name is Lazarus? Or Gregor? No, no. Lazarus, God. Work with me, people. Then we'll, we'll just kill him again. Good call. Um, you reckon this blue card will get us in somewhere? That's my hope. That's why I'm pocketing it. All right. Actually, you yeah. pocket it. Yeah, you pocket it. Because I've actually got pockets. Unlike some armored people that we know. <laughs> Uh, little Moss, roll uh, perception. You just said you weren't wearing a shirt. Well, um, I've got pants. <laughs> okay, so not like a shirt pocket. <laughs> um, roll perception. Yes, sir. Uh, ten. All right. As you guys are just chilling and talking, off in the uh, background towards the south tunnel, there are some red beams firing out of the tunnel and hitting the uh, the ground and stuff in the south tunnel. There are pings and tangs of blade screeches of creatures. You guys, I think that's the DM's way of saying hurry up. Now you guys hear the uh, the slight sounds of battle for a moment, and then you look towards the south tunnel and you see Hayashida walking out, stuck in his street samurai armor. Is this red hot blade? And he just knocks it out of his armor with his katana. He's bleeding few cuts and uh, grazes and such he places his katana back in the sheath on his belt and he looks he walks out into the big room he looks around sees the corpses of the things and then just puts his hand up to wave to you walks over hey hi Oshida I was trying to get in contact with Ultra Dai but it seems that we're so deep underground or maybe there's some sort of blocking agent or technology here did you guys um yeah the cyborg zombie things there are a few of them down that way as well what yeah watch out they pop when they die do they yeah yeah well ours did at least so we're pretty well done up here. We found a blue key card, so we're looking for a blue door. And we found another key card, so we're looking for an old door. And we reckon they're up this other direction. So in the north, you see... Uh, it was there when you entered. It didn't just appear. Mm-hmm. That large black uh, sort of block on the map there with that little symbol on it. That's like a huge blast door. Next to it, there is a uh, like a panel with a key code and like a little computer screen and such. Looks like it'll be hacking again. No, just use the card. Yeah, no need for hacking. That's what I suggest. Looks just like I'll be hacking again. <laughs> just do, just do the beep. If you uh, found a key card or two, maybe one will work on that. Assuming that's how we get to Lazarus. Aishida walks over to the door. Knocks on the blast door. It's pretty solid. Loikag starts randomly tapping the key card in various spots because he's still, he's not taking damage from his Brutix, but he's still dumb. (laughs) Uh, So he's just like (laughs) tapping it here, tapping it there, trying to insert it through the the key number slots. Um, I don't think that this key works. I've got no idea, bros. Cortain will roll a perception. He rolled one. He <laughs> he's like, keep going, low cag. <laughs> Keeps going. Some kind of hidden lock. <laughs> Maybe if I swipe it, is it swipe? Oh, I don't know. Is it tap? Hang on. Uh, Hayashida is like walking behind you and just watching you tapping on the wall and stuff. And then he walks over to the computer screen, which has like the little buttons and stuff next to it, and. He's like, hey, uh, Lokag, uh, wanna try. Yeah, boss. Wanna try this? That. Yeah, go, sure, yeah, yeah. 
I start tapping on the screen with the card. No, it doesn't work, bro. When you tap on the screen with the tap the card on the screen, the blue card, the screen lights up from that sort of uh, greeny LED unpowered screen to this bright blue screen. And it says, uh, where are we? On the screen, it reads palm identification. And it has an Yo, outline what, of a What's hand. that? I've got palm trees back home, but I've got no trees here. What's a palm? That's a hand. That's a hand. Wait, cut off Gregor's hand. We need it. I think we'll just drag him to the screen. Oh, maybe. He's pretty heavy. Hang on, I can do that. I drop the cards and I walk over to pick up Gregor. I sheet a bend down and picks up the cards. You pick up Gregor, you make your way over to the door. You know how you said this wouldn't be more than an hour long? <laughs> <laughs> 24 minutes to open the door. Hmm. All right, I slap Gregor's hand onto the handprint thing. All right. The screen goes wiggle off. Wiggle the fingers around. All of the lights, those fluorescent or the the bright lights, switch off. And then above the door, there's this large orange emergency light. And it starts to flick beams of this amber light across the room as the blast doors crack open. And thick, sterilizing steam belches out of this opening entrance. As the doors open... You find a small chamber with a glass door, which shows the next room. So the next room that you see through Lokag as you're looking into this small chamber is a 30 foot dark room with red lights um, over the top of 12 regular sized doors, heavy duty looking doors against the east and the west wall. And as you look up, you see that there is this large red screen saying that displays a countdown which reads two minutes until or two minutes bacterial sterilization commences and then it starts counting down one minute 59 one minute 58 it continues there's a massive clock room guys and i walk inside of it hayashida jumps in as well and then he turns on his comms to you guys the local comms and he says uh i think you uh, i think we should all try and get in this room here uh what time gets in the room? I'll be there in a minute. And speaks slowly, walks as fast as he can to the... I'm in. Uh, Lokag, are you still in. carrying Gregor? Um, no, nah, I think I... Take I him. put him down outside the other room. Come on. Well, I can be. But I, so Lo, um, Moss encouraged me to pick up Lokag, so I, I I pick him up. I've, I'm carrying him inside the room. Are you picking up Lokag or Gregor? I'm picking up Gregor. I am Lokag. <laughs> I pick up Gregor. All right, you carry him into the room. And as the display counts down in this large red font that large door behind you closes and now it's incredibly cramped in here because i'm guessing wolfie came along with you it's so cramped you just, this big steel wolf-like bot is pushing you against the walls and all of this thick sterilizing steam sprays out of these various holes in the walls that you couldn't quite see before uh and you feel all of the dirt and all of the grime and stuff that has built up all over you and your armor and your weapons and such from your traveling in the sewers just sort of falls away onto the floor and then this spray intensifies on the floor and then it says sterilization complete the doors open to this dark room where the lights flick on bloop, 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 bloop. The, LED, the red lights go off and white bright lights shine into this room and it's very sterile this this uh, sort of white tiled floor these white walls a uh, sort of silver steel roof with these large lights built into it and then along the east and west wall there are these large or I should say regular sized heavy duty steel doors with subject displayed holographically over them and it will say zero one up to six on the left hand side and zero seven to twelve on the right hand side in the north there is a another door um very similar to the glass one that you just went through but it's sort of like an a uh, a, an opaque glass this frosted glass now i need uh, everyone to make a perception check for me Eight for Cortain. Four for Lokag. Ooh, Four. 24 for, for Little Moss. That's a crit. 
Nice. 14 of the nice. speaks. I can see through time. So everyone <laughs> is sort of looking around this room, reading, you know, subject and the number. And there's nothing really else in this room for quite a large room. And then, Little Moss, you're looking around and you see on the wall behind you as you exit, there is a another sort of computer screen, a keypad, and a hand print sign on the actual screen. You also... Hey, guys! And then I pointed out. You see on the, on the ceiling, there is this small half dome that's the same steel color as the ceiling. And the light is blinking green. <coughs> you notice that the light there are five lights on it. These little tiny lights, blinking green. You see one turn red. You see a second um, one turning red. <laughs> Guys, I I don't think we should uh, go through until we disable whatever that is. And then I point to the thing. The lights are going from green to red. A third one goes red. What do we need, boss? Uh, do, put do we need a hand or? Put Gregor's hand on the thing, quick. I rush up to the the point place where the loca, um, little moss pointed me and I put Gregor's hand on it. You put his hand on there and then it says handprint recognized enter mm. key code. Then the oh. the little um, n- the numbered display on the keypad next to the screen lights up. Four digit code. It's- oh crap. It needs a key code. It needs a number. Um, I... Five red lights, little moss. Is there a number on that old card? I look at the... Um, sheet is looking on the card. The photo. And I look at the photo that um I had stuffed into uh, Gregor's uh, chest pocket. I don't think so. I'm pretty sure you not? picked up Gregor and uh, because... No, I gave him the photo. Did he drop he it? He must have dropped it. What a dog. Didn't he love his family? <laughs> he was unconscious. He got well, he should have stuffed it. He was precious. He knew he was gonna get pistol whipped. He's like, oh, I'm gonna get pistol whipped. I was tucked inside inside my armor. No, he was gonna get pistol whipped. He was talking to you. Yes, he did. He, we told him we gotta kill him. Alright, he doesn't. So fail that. Um Alright, everyone roll I, a dexterity saving throw for me. No. Uh 24 Cortain. Nice. 11 for Moss. 21 for Lokag. 9. 14 for Spooks. And 19 for Hayashida. So everyone under 16, you take... 15 ballistic damage as these two turrets just pop out of the ceiling. The, the, uh, the steel just sort of slides away these high four high powered heavy caliber auto turrets just sort of exist they just come out of nowhere almost and they start blasting bursting rounds of this sort of um high caliber bullets at you so those of you who passed hear them pop out and dodge the first round of firing and those who don't you take that 15 ballistic damage so you you hear each of the turrets reloading. Um, the door over the other side. Um, you see the handprint light up holographically over the door. I think we just need to get over there, guys. Come on, let's run over there with um, Gregor still in hand. All right, <laughs> I will. As as Biggs is getting across there with his clumpy chicken feet. Yep. I will shield him with my with my shield. All right. So you get to the other side. Uh, everybody needs to make a dexterity saving throw again. Seventeen for Spigs. Cool. Eight. It's a little. It, it is a little lower because uh, you know the things are there now. But eight does fail. I've oh got my, my sixteen. God. So eleven. Oh. Again. Okay. Higher Shida fails as well. They fire a second burst. 
so those of you who failed take a good uh that's not too bad actually that's seven ballistic damage this time they are still there you can um you can attack them if you wish if you have um firearms or, or ranged weapons or whatever you can do that uh let's go with that's uh, locag first what are you doing um, putting old mate's hand on the handprint. I've got no ranged weapons. All right. Besides the sawn off, but that's not ranged. You place his hand on there, and the door slides open. All of the light, bright lights go out, and all of the lights in the next room and this current room go red. All of this sort of uh, fog starts to. F- um, sort of uh, emanate from vents. Okay, so Levi, I'm pretty sure that I just hit the like warning sign rather than the next door. Like, <laughs> oh no, we're all gonna die. Hit the warning sign. But Lokag doesn't realize that. He's like, whoa, oh no, fog, whoa. So as you guys move into the next room where the turrets cannot find you. They fire and, and, and uh, sort of just shoot the floor, basically. You see there are more doors with with uh, 13 up to 24 subjects. Now, in this room, there are a bunch of medical um, equipment in the center of the room. Built into the northern wall, there's another door. Uh, and all of this medical equipment, it looks quite expensive and well-made. Now, that door at the north is sort of slightly opening and closing, uh, maybe some sort of fault. Uh, Amongst all of this medical equipment, there are cybernetic parts. There are 3D carbon printed muscular systems and various cybernetic organs resting in sort of uh, antibacterial glass container units. Uh, Amongst these operating tables, you see three subjects, three dead bodies. An orc missing both of his arms, a half elf missing its lower jaw and a halfling they're all covered up to uh, sort of their chest area in white sheets there are partitions around the room displaying a sort of holographic projections of each of the bodies and some sort of technological data like uh, motherboard circuitry blueprints and that sort of thing you hear an ai voice play across the room out of speakers that are not to be seen Biological breach. Secondary. Security measures active. Condition. Theta. Red. Nine. Z. Little sprinklers pop out of the ceiling and a clear substance begins to rain down as it hits the corpses on the table. You see their skin, their hair, their eyes, the bone exposed start to burn away. You feel the substance burning you through the tiny gaps in your armor and your exposed skin. I need everyone to roll dexterity or tolerance. Ten. Fourteen. One. Tolerance, just remember tolerance is uh, basically constitution. If you're trained in tolerance, you get a bonus. Sorry, what did everyone get again? Sorry? Yeah. I've been doing the wrong dex throws. So is it a dex saving throw or just an ability modifier? Uh, saving throw. <gasps> okay, 14. Yeah. <laughs> 14 for Katan. Speaks? Speaks 21. Oh, nice. 21. Uh, so I've made the same mistake a few times as Trav has. Um, I got 29 for my dex saving throw. Oh, no, no, 24, 24. 24. I'm still reading the wrong things. 24 is my dex saving throw. Okay. So Spigs and Lokag pass. Uh, oops, I didn't roll for Hayashida. I should roll for Hayashida. Uh, he fails. So if you pass, you grab like a uh, a silver, you know, surgical steel tray, or you grab some sort of large plating and you hold it above or you. Or a chunky Gregor. Or, or a chunky <laughs> Gregor, if you want to use him as a shield. You can, no, of course uh, not. You block the liquid from spraying directly on you. You still get little sprays and taps and stuff like that, but it's not just spraying all over you. The rest of you, 
you uh, sort of rush through to the far door as you feel your skin burning beneath your armor, beneath your clothes. You take a uh, a 1d10 plus 4. What do we get here? Uh, 8 acid damage. Um, Spigston, roll a perception for me. Or or, uh, actually, roll an intelligence check for me. Ooh. Uh, 13. 13. All right. You realize you haven't heard Wolfie. You look, and all the way back in that first chamber, Wolfie couldn't fit through the human sized door. So he's sort of stuck oh, in that no. first chamber. Yeah. The rest of you get to the um, that, that door that's opening and closing quite, quite quickly. Um,. Oh no, my black purple, my black polyester turtleneck Cortain, wastes away. It is your turn. No. So, Cortain will try to force open the door. Yep. Uh, that's opening and closing. Roll strength. That is 21. 21. You rip the door open. You slide it, pushing it against the thing. It's pushing back against you. Um, if you let it go, it's just gonna close again. I will keep it open while my companions get through. Hayashida moves through. Low keg, little but moss. I close the door. Speak. <laughs> hey! <I'm> just <laughs> <laughs> little moss speaks just an hour. Everyone moves through to the next room, and it's a very similar room to this one. Lots of surgical uh, equipment. This one isn't as um the last one seems like it's where a lot of um cybernetic works done this next room is let's just say there are a lot of glass containers with old degraded organs and limbs and stuff everything's there's not it's not like a bloodbath or anything all these parts and pieces have been removed and they have been um sort of placed in these Containment, containment units the doors along the walls continue to read extra subjects um, some of them don't have any holographic display across there though this time there is a, a door at the north it is open and you see maybe does it look like a house or something in the next room you're not sure but as you make your way through this room and into the next there is this large 50 foot by 50 foot room. It seems like a small habitation area. It looks like as if a person or people have been living there. It's quite nice. Old brown leather armchairs, some wooden bookcases, lounges, desks, a small kitchen, all those sorts of things in this room. Amber lamps and lights give this room a warm, welcoming look. There is a dark gray carpet, some floorboards, you see uh, four of these vats against the left wall. In two of them, there are, there is, or in one vat, there is this dwarven lady with blonde braids, long blonde blade, long blonde braids. There is a dwarven girl, young, the ones from the photo, Lokeg, and then the other two vats. The lights aren't turned on. There are just some dark figures floating around in there. Now, they're the first things you see because they're this bright green sort of teal liquid. And then this orange power grid-like shield runs through half of the room, slicing one of the armchairs in half, and the corner of a coffee table has fallen away from the main tabletop. From out of a room, maybe a bedroom or a bathroom, you're not sure, a woman walks long red hair tan skin with two black square tattoos under her eyes she has a bright red cybernetic arm and her other arm is covered in geometric shaped tattoos she's wearing this bright yellow armor plated jacket with the sleeves rolled up a skin tight dark purple ballistic weave bodysuit high high quality is what like assassins and stuff used to move through buildings to kill you know corporate execs and stuff she reaches and grabs this large sort of uh, white 
firearm, something you haven't seen before, a strange design off the wall. She has an electric cigarette in her mouth and the vapor is waving up towards the tall ceiling and she shakes her head slowly. A voice echoes through the room as a hollow projection of a tall, spindly elven man in a white lab coat, black shirt, and a high-necked granddad collar. Black slacks, white gloves. He has pale skin and dark receding hair tied into a small ponytail. Small, round glasses rest on his face and lines run down his face from his eyes, then across his cheekbones, down his face and neck. Where is Gregor? If he is dead, I will kill you and use your corpses to hunt down those who sent you here. Where is he? <clears throat> Lokag starts puppeting Gregor. <laughs> Hello, Lazarus. I'm Gregor. I'm alive. <laughs> And then I, I, I mean, sorry. Uh, no, no, yeah, no, he's, he's totally alive. Uh, sorry. Uh, yeah, he's, he's here. He's, I'm just carrying him like a baby. From the roof, uh, one of those half domes that you had seen earlier scans this through this orange grid-like scan, flickers up and down Gregor. This doctor seems to be looking at something wherever he is. Very good. Place him in the armchair and we can talk. I do not know who you are, but... We can work things out. We can discuss the reasons why you have come here and maybe why I shouldn't turn you into one of my subjects. So why have you come? I eye off how close the armchair is to those laser beams and if it's far enough away, I'll walk over and put Gregor in the armchair. Yeah, there's one that's safely uh, positioned. Yeah, so I do that and then stand over him like a protecting bulldog. We're Bust. not here for Gregor. We're here for you. <laughs> I expected as much, but I want to know why you have come. Who has sent you? Uh, we work for a big company, and um, they said that we should come get you, I guess. Let the, the speaking guy speak. Huh? What? Uh, I, I'd like to give you the, the foulest death stare, whatever, and my eyebrows keep shifting over to um, Samurai Guy, um, Hayashida, and Cortain, and going... Are you ha are you having a stroke? Hayashida says, We're not here to disclose who we are working for. We have come for you and your research. You owe somebody something. You are a wanted man, faking your own death and stealing research, research of various companies. If you're as smart as they say you are, you know who has sent us. But there's something else, something we think you might have. What do you think I have? I think you have the helm of the undying. <laughs> Lokag starts twitching something chronic as if he's having a stroke. I certainly do have the helm of the undying. I'm allowed to say it to the... I guess I... They're out of character. And without it, my research is dead. Just like, like your subjects. You what? Yes, just like my subjects. And then you see the lights come on on the two vats that weren't lit up before. These... Figures sort of twitch as the light comes on, twitching. Then they sort of stop as the liquid just is drained out and you can see them standing there. You see someone kind of familiar. They look a little different. You haven't seen them for quite a while. The other one you don't know, you haven't seen. But the familiar one wearing this tight white sort of body glove suit, ballistic weave suit, similar to the, the, the woman's. Half of his face is missing. The one of his arms and one of his legs on his left side, or both, you know, both limbs on the left side have been replaced with cybernetics. You see on the wall on this uh, hook, there is this white cowboy hat. The figure stumbles out and grabs the cowboy hat, shakingly putting it on his head. The LED holographic display on the front of it lights up and it says Turbo, and he points towards Cortain, saying. You took my neck, my arm. I wanted revenge, and they sent me here. These twisted me into something more powerful than I ever was. 
and for the edict of Aya, I will destroy you, poor Team Das, and when I'm done, I will do for your mother. And that's where we'll end it. <laughs> He's got no arms. <laughs> <laughs> No, oh, no. Cortain would be chuckling at that. Doesn't find Turbo a very threatening. <laughs> he's uh, even in death, he still has that stupid hat. Yep, the stupid white cowboy hat. <laughs> All right. So, thanks for listening. Thank you for downloading the show. Thank you for sharing the show with a friend. Thank you for sharing the show with a friend. Thank you for sharing the friend with a show. Do you guys remember who Turbo is? Because, like, I kind of do, but I, I also kind of don't. If you want to refresh your memory, check out our website, www.beyondthedice.com. We've also obviously got podcasts on Spotify. If you're going back to the old episodes, I recommend just, like, yeah, double time. It's great. You can get to the action. You can get to the fun bits you want to. I've done it a few times with our episodes. But, yeah, check us out on our website. And, you know... If you're just, you know, wasting more time on the interwebs, you should totally just check out our Instagram. All the pics and cool things are all over there. So, at Beyond the Dice. And after you finish scrolling through Instagram and you start scrolling through your Facebook, why don't you just look for Beyond the Dice in the search bar? And then like our page and you'll get notifications for all the news, new episodes and other cool things. And uh, if you've got some time, guys, please leave us a review. Um, that really helps us expand our listenership and just let other people know that the stuff we do is pretty cool. Thank you very much. And if you can't afford to um, review us, then you can afford to go to our store, store.beyondthedice.com. We have uh, merchandise there, T-shirts, hats, bags, masks, mugs. I think that's about it. Um, lots of cool stuff on there. Some stuff that's not just podcast related, but sort of RPG and D and D or sci-fi related. And um, look, now if you can't afford to review us, and you can't afford to buy t-shirts, it's understandable. It's all good. Just tell somebody about the show. Share us on social media. You don't have to go out of your way to do a review, but sharing us is also a massive way that helps us out. Um, just scream it out of the window. But give us a five-star review too. Thanks. All right. Bye. <laughs> Night, guys. Good night. Good night. Good night.